welcome back to the channel so in this video we are going to be building the second certification project which is the tribute project in the free code camp curriculum so the project we are going to be building is going to look something like this and this is a tribute page for dr norman bolo but I decided to switch it up a little bit and build this tribute page for Steve Jobs instead. Yeah, so let's get started. All right, so we have our index.html file here. We also have our styles.css file here. And then we have our instructions. So this is the instructions or user stories that we will be using to build our tribute page. And then we have this test here. So at the end of building it, if we run this test, all of these should pass. Okay. Yeah. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do when we are building an HTML page is to declare our doc type. So we'll say doc type and we'll say HTML. All right, next up, we want to add our HTML element. So we have our opening element and then our closing elements like so. Then within our HTML element, we'll have our head element. And then we we'll also have our body element as well. Okay, so let's add our body element. Now inside the head element i want to add some meta tags so the first meta tag i'm going to add is going to be for the chat set so i'm going to add the chat set attribute and the value of the chat set attribute is going to be utf dash eight okay for the next meta element I'm going to add a name attribute with the value description and then I'm going to add a content attribute with the value of Steve Jobs tribute. So this is just telling our browser, it's giving our browser some info on the kind of app or project that we are building next up we also want to add a title element a title element and the title of our page is going to be steve jobs tribute okay so inside the head element also we want to link our styles.css and our index.html okay so this is our styles i can come here and say body background color and i'll say green okay so now our page has not turned into green because we haven't linked the style sheet and the html file so the way we do that is to use the link the link element, which is a self-closing element, and we give it an attribute of rel with a value of style sheet. Then we also give it an href attribute, which will have a value of styles.css. Now, once we do that, you can see that our page has turned to green, which means our styles that we have here is working as expected okay so let's continue now next up what we want to do is to start building out our markup okay so yeah let's continue so when we read our user stories the first thing we see is your tribute page should have a main element with a corresponding id of main which contains all elements okay so all the elements that we are going to have has to be in this main element so we'll add our main element okay 
and then this main element is supposed to have an id of uh, main then we start building our application let me clean this so that we take the green away okay so now we start building our tribute page okay so when we look at the page we can see that we have this here this sort of header here and then we have this image with a caption and then we have this timeline and we have a quote here and then we have this sort of a footer here so we we'll start by adding the html for this header so the way we're going to do it is to add a header element like so and then inside this header element we have an h1 and uh, as we can see in number two you should see an element with an id of title <clears throat> so the h1 we want to give it an id attribute with a value of title okay and then we write the name steve jobs inside like so so as you can see it appears here all right next up we want to add as you can see this sort of paragraph here so add a p tag and then we just say uh let's just say visionary entrepreneur and uh, technologist all right so next up we want to work on the image okay so we are done with this let's move to the image and the caption so for the image and caption we are told that you should see a figure or a div element with an id of image div so we're going to use a figure element so we use a figure element and uh, we're going to give it an id of image dash div okay so within the image dash div element which we have here you should see an image element with a corresponding id of image so let let's add our image elements and then we want to give it a corresponding id the value of the id is going to be image and then <coughs> we're also going to <coughs> give it an alt we just say for screen readers of course we just say steve jobs and then we're also going to give it a source so for the source i have this image here that i'm going to use so i'll just copy the url okay and then paste it here all right so now as you can see we have our image here on our page it's very big at the moment but we are going to work on it as we move on so for now let's just continue so the next thing that i want to add is the caption for the image so to do that we are going to use the fake caption element okay so fake caption and then as you can see within the image div element you should see an element with a corresponding id of image caption okay that contains textual content describing the image shown so using the fake caption i'm going to give the fake caption an id of img dash caption okay and the text i want to give it is steve jobs revolutionized personal computing personal computing and uh, consumer electronics 
okay so now we are done with the header we've also worked on the image and the caption the next thing we want to look at is the timeline okay so for the timeline as you can see we have this header here this sort of heading here and then we also have this list of events which has been uh well arranged as you can see so that's what we are going to work on so for this part i'm going to use the section element okay now number six it says you should see an element with a corresponding id of tribute info which contains textual content describing the subject of the tribute so like i said i would want to use so i'll come here a session and of course i'm going to give this section an id of tribute info okay so an id attribute to the value tribute info all right now within the session okay i am going to add an h2 so let me pull this up a little bit so have an h2 like so and i'll just say here is a timeline of jobs life or oh, let me just say here's a timeline of steve jobs life okay all right now next up i want to add a ul okay so an on ordered list and uh, this ul is going to have a bunch of allies okay yeah and then as you can see each uh item here has a date or a year and then the text so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the year in a span so that we can get it and style it to give it this bold look okay so inside the li i'm going to have a span okay and I'm just going to call this, give it a class. So all the span will have a class of date year. And then for the first one, uh, for Steve Jobs, I'm going to say, I have some information here that I got it. So he was born on 19, in 1955. So I'm just going to put 1955 here. And then I'm also going to copy this. Okay. And I'm just going to post it here. All right. So I'll do the same for the second one. Let me just copy it. So I'm going to use a shortcut here, which is option shift. So I'll hold option and shift and then press down. Which will just copy everything if you're on windows it's alt and shift and then you press down okay so I'll clean this up uh the next date is uh 1976 that was the year that he co-founded apple together with wozniak and uh together with wozniak and ronald wayne so I'm just going to copy this one here, okay? And I'll paste it here. Now I have a number of them that I have to do. So instead of just typing them out one after the other, I'm just going to copy it here, okay? So I've already done it, so I'll just copy it and then paste it so that you don't have to watch me typing all of them one by one. But it's all the same thing as you can see. So the first one has a is an li. We have an li here, and then inside the li we have a span. 
the span contains the date and then we also have some text that describes what happens on that date okay so the same thing here we have an li we have a span and then we have some text so same for the rest as well we have an li a span and a text okay so that does it for the timeline bits next up we want to look at this code here so for my code i decided to go with this code from uh, barack obama here so i'll just copy it and then i'm going to put it so i'll come out of the section so this is the closing element for section i'll just come out of it and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the okay you know what let me keep it inside the session so within the session i'm going to add a p tag so this p tag will contain the quotes all right and i'm also going to add another p tag and this p tag is going to hold the name of the, the author of the code so in this case barack obama uh former president of the united states okay so i'm going to give this p tag an id let me call the id author so that i can style it uh or probably this is not even necessary so yeah okay so now we're also done with the timeline bit next let's look at this footer here so now i'll come out of the section and then i'll use a footer element so we have our opening footer and our closing footer here so inside the footer i will have uh, a p tag like so and i'm just going to copy what we have here if you have time you should read more about this incredible human being blah 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 i'll just copy it and paste it here okay so now uh when you come here you should see an element with a corresponding id of tribute info we've already done that you should see an a element with a corresponding id of tribute link which links to an outside site okay so as you can see here we have this footer and we have this link here which links to an outside source which is wikipedia okay so we want to do the same thing we are going to wrap this around in an a tag okay and i'm going to give this a tag an id with the value of tribute link okay i will also give it an href and the value of the href we are going to get uh, Steve Jobs Wikipedia so I'll just copy the link from here and then I'll come and paste it right here and then also don't forget the target attributes so what the target attribute does is that when you add the target attribute and you click on the link it opens the link on a new page Right. So instead of opening the link on the page that you are currently on, it's going to open the link on a new page. So the value of target is going to be underscore blank like so. All right. Looks like we are almost done. Mm, yeah, that's it. So we are done with the html side of it so next up is the css so we have our header here 
we have our image with a caption we have our timeline our quote and then the the footer okay so before we go on and add the css let's run the test and see if it will pass okay so i'm going to click here all right so as you can see we have everything passing some are failing of course so let's see which ones are failing so your image dot div image image caption tribute info tribute link and main should all be descendants of main okay so let's see we have a uh, first image div let's see if we have image div yes we have image div next up image yes we have image how about image caption okay so i guess okay we have image caption also here okay tribute info let's see yeah we have tribute info how about tribute link so i think what we don't have is tribute link so let's see uh we have tribute link here as well okay so why is it failing then let's run the test again all right so okay this is our main element your image diff so let's see where is image diff oh so it's not image diff it should be img diff so it was a spelling mistake yeah so how about caption img caption tribute info and then tribute link yeah tribute link okay so let's see yeah so it passes now then which one else is failing okay your img element should have a display of block okay we'll do this in the css we'll do this one also in the css yeah we'll do this also in the css all right so all of our tests are passing like we expected the ones that are not passing are just css so when we work on the css that should be fixed as well all right so let's get into the css bit okay so the first thing i want to do is i'm going to go to google font because we want to change this font that we are using here i want us to use a more stylish font or something better than the current one that we are using so go to google font google font has a number of fonts that you can use so i'm going to use this one here roboto and i'm going to select 300 the font width so 300 uh 500 which is medium and then 700 which is bold okay so after selecting the font width that you want to use just come here you see this link and then this import so i'll click on import then i'll just copy what is here without the style okay i'm not copying this i'm only copying what is inside the style element so i'll just copy this and then in our page i'll just paste it on top of our css file all right now let's continue so the first thing i want to touch on is the body so i'm going to use a font style sorry font family uh roboto which is the font that we just use we just uh copied from google font and then i'll use sans serif so the sans serif is going to act as a fallback in case a browser doesn't have roboto then it will automatically use uh sans serif okay so as you can see the font has changed all right so i'll give you the font width because currently it looks like everything is bolding so i'll give you the font width of 300 which is the normal 
width okay as you can see next up i'll give some margins so margin 20 pixels and then so 20 pixels for the top and bottom and then let's do five pixels for left and right okay then let's do pattern of uh, five pixels okay now let's go to the main element i'll just say background color and i'll just give it a grayish this grayish looking color okay which is what we have here okay all right now the next thing we want to style is the header so i'll select the header element first i'll align the text so text align center okay so as you can see we have our headers text centered then uh, we have let's give you some pardon uh, 15 pixels for the top and down and then zero for the left and right let's also give it a width of uh, 100 percent 100 percent okay we we are giving it a width of 100 percent because uh it's part of the requirement okay there's the test here oh no okay this is for the image okay all right that's fine we'll get to it so the next thing we want to style is the h1 so i'll select the h1 give it a font width a font width of 700 and then also a margin button of zero yeah next up let's select the div that has the image so img dash div okay and what we want to do is we want to set the display as you can see here your display your img element should have a display of block so uh sorry image should have a display of block max width of a uh, hundred percent okay so now the image is looking better than before let's give it a margin just to properly center it a margin of zero and auto so zero for top and down auto for left and right and then we also have a text align center as well okay so i forgot the image div so image div uh, let's give it a background color of uh, white okay let's give it a pattern of uh, five pixels okay looking better now all right now let's work on the caption so we we'll select image caption remember we gave it an id of image caption so that's what we are using so we want to align the text to the center uh we want to change the font style let's give it an italic style okay uh, let's change the size to 0 0.9 rem that will make it a bit smaller okay yeah this looks good now let's give it a margin top let's give some breathing room of uh, five pixels yeah it looks this looks good uh next up we want to add or want to select the attribute info okay 
attribute info which is the div containing all of this text okay so we want to give it so right now when we stretch the page as you can see the all of the text stretches alongside with it we don't want that we want to give it a max width because when you look at this one let me show you something when you look at this one when you stretch it you see the text is centered nicely like so so that's the kind of effect that we want to have so to do that we have to give it a max width so when it hits the max width it's not going to stretch any longer so we'll give it a max width of 500 pixels now as you can see we can stretch it as much as we want but it doesn't go beyond 500 pixels okay all right next up we want to center it because when you stretch it like this it's not centered it's shifted to the left of the screen but we want to center it so we use margin we we'll give it a margin of 20 pixels for the top and down and then auto for the left and right all right now it's nicely centered exactly as we want it okay next up let's target this h2 that we have here so h2 and then let's align it to the center so text align center let's give it a font width of uh, 500 uh, let's also <coughs> give it a margin uh, let's give it 40 okay i think 50 50 will be better okay good now just a moment let's go back to the html i want to show you something okay so remember for the li for the list item we added the span element here and we gave each one of them a class of date here okay so we want to target those elements with a class of date here so we say dot date here and then we want to give them so that's the date. We want to give them a font width of uh, 700. Okay. That is going to bold in all of them. All right. So let's continue. Now, what we want to do is we want to also um, target the tribute info. And then the li so all the li in the tribute info want to give them a margin left of uh, 10 pixels and then let's do margin bottom also just to put some spaces in between them because at the moment as you can see they are all packed together and it doesn't make it look nice so want to give it a margin bottom of 30 pixels yeah that looks better okay so let's see how it's looking now yeah also i want to remove this sort of padding here so that the text here will be in line with this so i'll just say um, tribute so i'm targeting the ul so tribute info you uh, and i'll say pardon let's give it a pardon of zero all right so to remove it now these guys are on the same line as the code below it all right so uh in case you're wondering i'm going to leave a link in the description with the source code so i'm going to leave a github link where you can see all of the code so in case you want to go through it you can do so all right so next up i am going to 
look at the the quotes that we have here uh so let's see tribute info and then that's a paragraph so i'll say p and then let's make the text italic so font style italic all right Yeah, now let's work on the footer here. We are almost done. So for the footer, we are going to give it a margin just to push it down a bit. We're going to say zero for the top and bottom and then auto. So this will center it. Uh, let's give it a max width of uh, 700 pixels. 700 pixels okay let's also uh, let's also give it a pardon of uh, 10 pixels yeah so that sort of separated a bit from the <coughs> from the text above now let's select the paragraph itself so p footer with a space p and we'll say font width let's give it a font width of 500 okay that works all right so let's check if our link is working all right so this is working okay so yeah we are almost done here yeah we are done here so yeah there's a little uh tribute page for steve jobs who was one of the founders of apple so let's run the test one more time and see if everything will pass okay so it passes so we have completed uh two of five certification projects so i've completed the first one which is the survey form project i also leave a link to that one in the description below and like i said i will also leave a link to the github source code so you can see the html code and the css code as well if you want to have a look at it so that is going to be it for this video uh Thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.